I want nothing to do with this. What makes you think I'm not going to submit the first second I get a chance? Because, princess, I still hold this. And little secrets. Mike Quackenbush here at Commentation Station, just being joined by our director of fun, Bryce Remsburg. Lots going on today, lots happening, lots to come. Hashtag LLL Chikara. Haven't seen it in over 10 years, Mike, and excited to see him return here today to the Wrestle Factory. What an intriguing pair. I mean, in a way, every single team you drew at random has a certain kind of intrigue to it, but I am most intrigued to see how Princess Kimberly and the Whisper combine forces as a tag team, especially given what we saw way back in season 17. Former Grand Champion and former Young Lions Cup champ together. One of the eight randomly selected teams will leave here with three points today. And introducing their opponents. The winners of La Loteria Letal, we know, will get to challenge the reigning Campeones de Parejas at this year's season finale, coming up in December. As if Sloan Caprice did not have enough to, to on his plate here this afternoon as he challenges for the Grand Championship, he'll be keeping one half an eye on this tournament because one of these teams that wasn't even a team 10 minutes ago will have three coins in just a couple hours. Yeah, and uh, I was taking notes as you were drawing them out there, Bryce. There is not a single team here where they have functioned as a duo in the past. Interesting. So, boy, what an uphill battle it's going to be regardless of which teams end up in the finals. Smiling underneath there, so a lot going on this afternoon. You know, picking the, at random these teams, but I couldn't help but notice the Wrestle Factory in a in a bit of a mess this afternoon. Mike. Yeah, uh, testimony to our crew. Boy, they got that uh, all cleaned up very quickly. Curtains were all out of place. It was a mess everywhere when we rolled in, but we had to make it look nice because our friends from PBS are here with us today, overseeing La Loteria Letal. The first of four quarterfinal matches in this tag team tournament, and you'll be seeing all of it today. Bell is about to sound. It looks like we're getting Princess Kimberly and Shazza McKenzie squaring off. Former Grand Champ Princess Kimberly. Haven't seen her in a few months. I believe the last instance at the Infinite Gauntlet back in the Poconos. There's a handshake to start things off. Shaz McKenzie World Travel actually saw her just a few weeks ago at King of Trios. It was that tournament that, that, that Kim had to back out of, unfortunately, to go tour stardom in Japan. So World Travel, both these ladies, very much so. Uh, not sure if this is their first encounter or not, but they definitely shared locker rooms in the past. Well, actually, I had a chance to ask Princess Kimberly that exact thing. She is quite familiar with Shaz and McKenzie, even though they missed each other at the biggest tournament in all of pro wrestling. It was Kikotaro who took Princess Kimberly's spot. Kimberly showing off how nimble she is. You know, Shazza McKenzie is also an incredibly agile performer. Yeah, she's a, gy a gymnastics background. Uh, both of them can, can do sports with their body. I couldn't even begin to think about it. Very, very talented women. We're lucky to have them both here in the Wrestle Factory this afternoon. All the way, Shaz, I believe, traveled the farthest, if I'm not mistaken. Right, the other side of the class. The, uh, the toilet's kept in there. That's how far away it is. That's the only thing I know about it. I spent a week there last week. I know something about tin cans. Oh, okay. Thing. I'd like to see a money. But now back steakhouse. Mm -hmm. Jazz McKenzie comes right out of that and steals a side headlock on Princess Kimber Lee. She's doing a nice job of bringing her weight up all the way past the head. That's going to make it difficult, even if Kim could get her legs around Shaz's head, to pull her back into a head scissor. Kim's not going to linger down on the mat, though. She's already getting back to her vertical base. Gonna try and twist out of this headlock, it looks like. Can she come out with the overhand wrist lock? Does she have something else in mind? Looks like she's got exactly that. Overhand wrist lock to control. Shazza down to the map, but the left shoulder blade is up off the mat, as Shazza herself, I believe, just told our referee. It's an interesting feeling out process, because if you think about it, I mean, they're ultimately running a sprint. The winning team has to win three tag team matches this afternoon. So the, this, this feeling out process, this chain wrestling, I mean, I'm sure they're getting a feel for another, but Ooh. there's no time to be wasted here. Exactly, and these quarterfinal matches, as we sort of request the blathers in tone, 15-minute time limit. 
Time is of the essence. Texas, Kimberly just waiting on Shaz and McKenzie. Oh, oh no! Forearm there by Shazza. Kim responds in kind. Back and forth they go. A salvo of blows, a headbutt from the princess. I'd say maybe a, approximately equal. In a, I'd say Shazza's been wrestling maybe a little bit longer than Kimberly. Maybe not with the, the, the world traveling experience and the variety of opponents that Kim has had. But I, I want to say Shaz has been wrestling a bit longer. And I think Kim has come back noticeably improved. She was on tour for an extended period of time with stardom in Japan, was able to achieve one of her career goals by touring Japan. And what I just noticed there, Bryce, in terms of how this team is gonna work, Kim did not tag the Whispers. You see, she just rolled out of the ring, forcing a tag in her corner. Not a good start if they want to be champions one day. Uh, just rolling out, you saw, and not much nicer of a tag there was Hollow Wicked. But not, oh. Gado clutch yeah. from Shazza brought the weight forward. She's caught the whisper with a forearm and now a back elbow. Boy, she's just stringing together. Snapmare to follow. Great combination offense from Shazza McKenzie. You should know this, Mike. Shazza makes no secret about her long term Chicago fandom. So, her to be on the same side, I mean, you could put those blinders away quick, but teaming with the Gen 1 original, the guy who's pretty much done everything there is to do inside of a Chikara ring as her partner, there's got to be, make her feel a certain kind of way. Shazza McKenzie from the interlock front chance. tried to take the Whisper over, but the Whisper's strength made all the difference. And now it's Shazza who's down on the mat as the Whisper's prepared to uncork that trademark leg drop of his. Look at the far leg, earned him a count of two, but only two. Hollywood is a most interesting competitor in this for this reason. I tend to believe that veteran wrestlers in these situations are more adaptable. And in a tournament like this, you must adapt to whomever you draw in the lottery as fast as you possibly can. I would bank on if anybody could do that, it's either going to be Hollow Wicked or the late minute addition to the tournament, Jimmy Rage. In 16 and a half years, oh my goodness! Look at that! And you just like you said, being very adaptable, these two no strangers to one another was Hollow Wicked who won the Grand Championship from Kim in Glasgow, Scotland after she won it from him at Top Anan in Philadelphia. What a rivalry between these two, both former Grand Champions. Hollow Wicked, the only one to hold it twice. Kimberly, the only female to hold the Grand Championship. And a cover hook of the far leg, it's good for two. Wasting any time getting acclimated to one another's styles, getting right into the heavy artillery here. Kim shooting Wicked off a nice reversal by the Gen 1 original up and around she goes! Oh, satellite DDT from the Princess. One more time, she's got him cradled up high. Shazza McKenzie to the rescue. This is a must-win scenario for each and every tag team out there. You've got to win in order to go on. And, you know, I think about... Only four, we had four total defenses of the Campeonatos de Parejas thus far this season. For many of the wrestlers in this tournament, this will be their only chance to earn three points and get into the title picture. It's a must-win scenario. We spoke about the, briefly about the interesting scenario that Sloan Caprice is in, the reigning co-holder of Los Campeonatos, challenging for the Grand Championship. How about the Whisper? He's sitting on three coins toward the Grand Championship. He could leave today with an entirely different set of three coins towards Los Campeonatos. So the rest of the season, very interesting already, as we're in the home stretch, Mike. Mm -hmm. After today, only three more events left in Season 19, all three here at the WrestleFact, November 10th, November 24th, December 8th. Come and join us. As we are in the, 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 the third year, baby, the, the final stretch of season 19. The whole year is reaching its climax, and with just three events left after today, great opportunity. Come on out and see it live here at our home base and training facility, the Wrestle Factory in Philadelphia. Shazza McKenzie right now, enjoying an advantage over Princess Kimberly. And even when Kim is down, you cannot count her out. She has always had the heart of a champion. Of course, the fans here are great. Shikarmi know that better than any. Welcome back with open arms every time. She's able to fit us into her very, very demanding, busy schedule. And Shazza now, maybe a little bit of blood there on the lip, on the teeth of Shazza. I'm not sure, but maybe a, 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 a blow buster open on the inside. That may have lit something inside of Shazza, a place she wasn't prepared to go this afternoon. She's got her all tied up down on the mat, stretching Princess Kimberly out. And of course, you're going to have to wear the princess down if you want any possibility of putting her away. 
Fighting back through a vertical base. She's met with the elbow of Shazza McKenzie that just sends the princess crumbling back down to the mat. Look at asking for a tag. Must have an idea. Shaza obliges. He is the veteran, as you said, very adaptable. There aren't too many situations he hasn't seen in his 16 and a half years. Knows obviously how to defeat Princess Kimberly. And he does not disguise his disdain for Princess one bit. There are few people that seem to draw the ire of Hollow Wicked the way Princess Kimberly does, as is being physically expressed in the ring right now. Hooking a leg. Oh, a handful of hair in plain view of our referee. A number of times they tried to hold Princess Kimberly's shoulders down for the count of three, but they haven't been able to do it yet. And Zagiri, back brain kick, found the mark, rocking the skull of Hollow Wicked. Kimberly, no. She took a second to size up that situation and decided, no, I will not tag you. And the whisper just tagged in himself. She trusts herself more than her partner, which is now a shoving match. It's only the quarter final. Whisper's shoulders are exposed. Shazza stacked him up nice and high and just measured him, waited for that arm to come in so she could uncork a swinging neck breaker. Shazza McKenzie's wrestling an excellent game this afternoon at La Loteria Letal. And that's going to be demanded of all 16 participants if they have any hope of making it to the finals. The whole tournament today here at the Wrestle Factory, in addition to three non tournament bouts. It's a very full afternoon at the matches. If memory serves, the last time it was over 10 years ago, the, the winning tandem went on to be a team for years. Mm -hmm. a, a team was born. We could see that here today. Oh, great looking belly back suplex out of McKenzie. The whisper looks rocked. He's on Dream Street. And here comes the Nightmare Warrior, Hollow Wicked, to follow up really quickly, probably just out of instinct. The Whisper rolled his shoulders up off the mat. Interesting strategy there. Shaz doing the heavy lifting. Hollow Wicked not opting to add an exclamation point, going for the cover himself and somewhere. Not hooking up the leg by Hollow Wicked. I don't know if his game is off. He's underestimating the Whisper and Princess Kimberly. Well, this whole tournament can be so disorienting. We've seen Hollow Wicked team with Frightmare. We've seen him team with Kobo going all the way back. He He's been a tag team expert for years. Think about his run with Blind Rage or his run with Delirious here at Jakaraz Campiones. This has got to be disorienting for every single person in the tournament. The only team that has any real vague experience together, I would say, is Oleg and Hype from the brief time they sometimes came together as Hyper Beast Warriors. But even that is limited to just two matches. As we saw just a couple weeks ago, they're not even on the same page right now. So that, that's yeah. a, a, a very vague allusion to a team. Plants the whisper. Ooh. Big arm and legger followed by the double foot stomp of Hollow Wicked. The whisper is down, but not for three. His shoulder came up before the final and fatal three count could be registered. And now it's Hollow Wicked's turn to punish the whisper. Snagging four on there by the whisper, making a pair, just trying to kind of create some distance from the taller, more powerful, more experienced Hollow Wicked. I don't know, have you ever seen Hollow Wicked against the whisper before right now? Don't believe so. First time ever, I think. And these two have you know, a lot in common. If you think about their rookie years, how much they were able to accomplish their first year in a Chikara ring. There aren't many of our athletes that could boast of the rookie years Hollow Wicked Whisper. One footed drop kick right on the point of the chin. Beautifully executed by the Whisper. This brought a bit of a mental crossroads here. Does he want to continue to go it alone? Or is he going to entrust, I mean, his his championship shot in Princess Kimberly. You see Kim, she's hesitant to even reach out for the tag. Princess Kimberly won't get the opportunity to tag because Shazza McKenzie just dragged her down off of the apron and the Whisper's window of opportunity just closed thanks to the Nightmare Warrior. Shazza may have made the decision for, oh, now Kim's making the decision for the Whisper. Well, that's Kimberly one way to change things up. Welcome to the Suplex Kingdom, Hollow Wicked, and I think a one-way ticket is coming your way next, Ms. McKenzie. One more time, it's a German Ooh. suplex and Gen 1 original Hollow Wicked goes for the ride. Shazza is next. It's a total of four so far, Bryce. Shazza's are spinning it in the way, if you notice. Ooh. One more for Hollow Wicked. He knows exactly what those feel like, and another one coming the way for Shazza. Neither Ooh. Shazza nor Hollow Wicked really able to recover from this salvo of suplexes from the sovereign of the squared circle, the princess herself.
If I can barely make out what they are saying to each other, but Kimberly is saying something to the effect of oh, nothing to do with you. I don't think she's got a choice, unfortunately. Jazza sends Whisper out of the ring. Maybe an opportunity to try some double team offense, but there's not a lot of time to come up with that in a tournament like this unless you can communicate on the fly with your partner. I think that's what Hollywood is trying to do right now. Showing her the way, puts her exactly where Shazza wants her. Look at the stacking up on the princess. She bridges out somehow. I mean, Shaz and Hollywood are trying to win a match. They shoved Kim and the Whisper into one another. I'm sure they thought the other one did that, but it was actually their opponents at fault. But it's all part of the strategy game. If they can't get along, if they can't act as a team, their chances of winning are even lower. You see Hollywood are directing traffic with his arms. Oh, he's looking for a spike pile driver. Jeez. Whisper interrupting, I guess you could say, coming to the rescue, Princess Kimberly. But as I said, it's a must-win situation for each and every competitor in this. Their only chance of picking up those three points and that title shot at our season finale is to work together. One more time, it looks like it's go to Sleepy Hollow and Shazza, oh no, the whisper caught it! Dragon screw right on Shazza's knee. Caught him again. Now it's Hollow Wicked going for the ride on the dragon screw. Goodness. Shazza not enough behind that one. Half Nelson into that backbreaker, put it really low on the spine. Not particularly attractive, but very effective. Just buried that knee right deep in the back of Shazza. She's pretty much totally out of this one. I'm not sure the Whisper's got in mind. Look at the Whisper up on the middle strand. Twisting right out onto Hollow Wicked like a cannonball. That's why he was 2017's Raid of Aladora so much, as you said, in his, his freshman year of competition. He pretty much did about all anyone can do. And now we're left with the women. Kim and Shazza, no, I spoke too soon. I thought they were sizing one another up. Shazza following Kim to the corner. They're up there in the high rent district. Shazza looking for one of her signatures, but no dice. Kim just sloughed her right off. Shazza crashed and burned. And Kim all the way from the top with a swan ton bomb that landed perfectly. Shoulders are down. It's a count of three.